Hey guys, I'm going to do chapter 17 and 18. It's going to be a chunk of videos, probably 10 or so. Um, it's going to combine chapter 17 and 18. 17 is basically, yay, water uses and management. Um, and the reason I'm doing them on the YouTube videos rather than in class is because most of the stuff that we're going to talk about in this chapter, we've already covered in one way or the other in class. Um, so it should be more of a review. Everything that you see in italics um, and smaller letters are information that I've added. Now, if somebody can remind me to email you a copy of the uh, PowerPoint, I will do that. But you'll kind of have to remind me of that. So here we go. Um, things we will be covering in this chapter. Um, Hydrological cycle a cycle is just the water cycle, which we've already done. I'll just go over a couple of different things. Um, most, as, as you can see, most of the things that you've seen, I think the only new topic that we will have here is how diversions and dams impact um, the amount of water available in certain places. And we'll talk a lot about groundwater and, and we have talked a lot about aquifers. We'll look at like what the structure of an aquifer is and um, a depletion of water from aquifers, what usually happens. It's an easy chapter. So uh, I should have made this smaller, but I haven't. Um, most of us know how the water cycle works, water evaporates, evaporation, condensation, precipitation, all that other wonderful stuff. You guys know that. Um, I've done that in class. So plants actually play a huge role in uh, the hydrological cycle itself. Um, they suck up water from the uh, soil and then that soil, uh, that soil, uh, suck up water from the soil and then, you know, leaves photosynthesis they use the water for whatever whatever water is needed for photosynthesis is used what is not is lost in the form of transpiration um stomatas are the really small like holes underneath the side of the cell on on, on the underside of the leaf which closes and opens <coughs> <coughs> excuse me um Guard cells are the cells that close and open the stomata, um, preventing, for example, if you were in uh, a desert plant, camp, uh, camp plants and C4 plants, I'm not expecting you guys to know all of that stuff. Just remember that plants play a very important role in the hydrological cycles. When and the process is called transpiration. Um, the cells through which water is lost in plants is the stomatas and, and they are guarded by and they they have like a gate gateway channel around them and those cells are called guard cells Yay. so here's a couple of facts kind of things that you have to memorize can gives you an idea of what the animal precipitation is um interestingly if you look at all these areas that are in the dark blue um and even green areas which is which are in these in this range here uh, where the precipitation is pretty high, um, the, you're also going to see that they were the cradles of civilization. That's where civilization began. Um, you know, have larger populations. Now, this area also has was one of the places where um, civilization kind of began, um, but it didn't it didn't look this way. Remember. Uh, Chirapunji is actually in uh, India, and that gets the largest annual precipitation um, in the world. In the United States, it's Mount Why I can't pronounce that, on, uh, in Kauai Island. And the, the very interesting part of this is one side of this mountain gets some of the highest rainfalls, and the other side gets some of the lowest rainfalls. Um, again, if you remember in class, we talked about windward and leeward side. Um, very good example. This is one side of the mountain is a very good example for the leeward side. It gets less than 20 inches of rain, um, not 20 centimeters, sorry, 20 centimeters of rain. And the other side is the windward side, uh, which gets 
more than 50 11 something like some atrocious amount of rain um i think it should be in this area 150 to uh 150 to 200 uh centimeters of rain um so a good example on the test for a rain shadow effect would be that mountain um, in the lower 48, Western, um, Western uh, Washington and Oregon get the largest amount of rain. Again, they are on the windward side of California mountains. So if you guys remember that picture that I drew on the board, in California, the mountain ranges are not that high. So the, wind, uh, the clouds actually get pushed over the mountains. And then as they get heavier they tend to descend and they descend on the other side of the mountains because uh, in california we have the santa ana winds that are very strong crosswinds and they even though the clouds are formed over the ocean in california they're actually pushed over the sierra um, um, over the, the mountains in california and then go to western washington and oregon and the lower 48 they get the most amount of rain uh, the driest part of the world is called uh, is the dry valley which is in antarctica they get zero zero inches oops zero inches of uh, snowfall and zero inches of uh, rainfall it is the driest and non ice covered part, non snow covered part of um antarctica most places chile uh, namibia chile libya um egypt or all the driest places in the world and if you look at these places you'll also notice that these are some of the places where there is has been the greatest amount of civil unrest in the past decade or so so things that in uh in influence the rain uh, rainfall one is the global atmospheric circulation which includes how much thermal energy what type of ocean currents are there how are air moving how do glacials move all of these things contribute to the uh, global atmospheric circulation now each and every one of these we will be discussing in a different chapter so at present all i need you to know is that these are the different things that influence the uh, global atmospheric circulation how close something is to a uh, some place is to the water resources is also um determines how much rain they're going to get usually coastal lands get more rain than inlands um even the great lakes particularly the ones in ontario they make a lot of difference in how much rain that place is going to get just because how how much moisture is in the air and oceans like the the cooling and the uh, heating uh, cycle of the oceans also makes a lot of impact on, on how much rain we get. Topography, in terms of topography, one of the biggest part here is going to be mountains. Um, again, like we talked about in the class, you have leeward mountain, leeward side, windward side, and how the mountains actually, because of the mountains, either clouds are getting blocked or they're being pushed on the other side and then they can't come back because of the amount of wind. Um, Yay. So, um, it's also called the leeward windward. It's also called the rain shadow effect. So I think the next slide, remember that the windward slope of the range usually gets heavier rainfall and the leeward gets no rainfall. Um, a good example here is how San Jose in California is actually on the other side of the um, Santa Cruz Mountains. They don't get any rainfall. San, oh, San Francisco, on the other hand, gets a lot of rainfall. Death Valley again. I don't think you guys, I hope you guys can see this last part. The other other part that's also on the Sierra Nevada ranges in the Pacific Coast range is Death Valley. Death Valley is on the leeward side and that's why they get absolutely no rain. I mean, they do get rain, but absolutely very, very little amount of rain. Here is a good, um, this is a good picture that this is the same mountain. Um, so usually if, now this is saying that the mountain is surrounded by water. Um, evaporation causes clouds to form out here. If you have heavy prevailing winds, they push the mountain, push the moisture laden um, air. And it, it just, as it's rising, it cools down because it's cooler. 
Um, it cools down once it reaches a certain altitude because of the prevailing winds. Condensation takes place, and then you have precipitation. So you have a lot of wind on this side, a lot of rain on this side, and then on the other side, since the since the rain clouds are never moving to that side of the mountain, you're not going to see it. So this would be your leeward side, and this would be your windward side. But now, in the case of California, these clouds are pushed across by the Santa Ana winds, which kind of blow from. So if if this is the ocean. Clouds are forming and moving upwards. You're going to see the clouds forming here. But then we have Santa Ana winds, which come from the opposite direction and kind of push those winds up to this side. So we, even though California is on the coast, that becomes the leeward side and this becomes the windward side. The most important part here is this definition, which is residence time, how long the water stays in a particular um, water, bo <coughs> water body or major com um, compartment. The ocean, it's about 3,000 years. Uh, the interesting part is not the ocean. In aquifers and groundwater, um, there are, there is, anywhere from 4.4 million years from the Pleistocene era to as young as 20,000 years. Um, so the groundwater, the residence time is much greater. And that is why any kind of contamination of the groundwater is such a, a, is, is a larger problem than the ocean. Uh, not to say that 3,000 years um, is any kind of short amount of time, but compared to 4.4 million to um, 20,000, uh, 3,000 is not that long. Um, this is uh, from the World Bank statistics, and this is one of the things that we will be paying a lot of attention to. Currently, 1.6 billion people live in areas with absolute water scarcity, um, which in certain World Bank reports is also termed as water insecurity. Um, and this is expected to rise to 2.8 billion people by 2025, which is, from today, about 10 years. Uh, usually we have noticed in the past any time um, th that's 1.6 billion people today are living either in the Middle East countries around that area, in the African uh, continent, in parts of Asia and parts of South America. All these places have in the past two, three decades seen some kind of civil unrest, some kind of quote unquote revolution. Um, so if you talk to an environmentalist um, or a sane person, um, they will look at most of the, they will tell you that most of the unrest that we're seeing today in the world, even starting, even going back to the Rwandan crisis, um, it, is because of a lack of water. Lack of water leads to lack of agriculture, especially in, in smaller um, the countries that are essentially agrarian. Lack of agriculture. Lack of agriculture leads to lack of resources. You have a large contingent. So if, if a society is very agrarian, they tend to have a lot more kids just because kids are free labor. Um, and then when you have a large contingent of young people and no means of income um, because their farms have gone dry um, tends to cause civil war and tends to cause unrest. So eh, brace yourself. So um, again, the ocean sold about, oops, ocean sold about 97% of all the liquid um, water on earth. So if one of you comes up with a cheaper way of desalination uh, for water, you are looking at being the next multi-billionaire. So get on it. Uh, and obviously 90% of the Earth's biomass, we have talked about this in the past, that the ocean actually contains more life per square inch than the uh, than uh, land mass. Uh, oceans play a vital role in moderating the um, Earth's climate, again, for climate, air and climate, we have a separate chapter that I will be going over all the painful details involved in that. Um, so, um, and then 
ocean currents usually lead to things like hurricanes and tornadoes. I'm running out.